took someone back when you prayed. And he came back. And, and oh, you didn't touch him. Yeah. Okay. They they do this. I mean, the pray the prayer uh, because this is uh, what this matter here about praying. I, I thought you I thought you pulled him. I didn't touch him. Yeah. Yeah. The Somalis do it like uh, they volunteer because they are they they are. Uh, no, actually, the Somalis do it. It's not the they are Shafi'is, okay. and Shafi'i says that when you go, when you pray, uh, that you should, if you are alone in the Saf, that you should have someone with you. The Shafi'i Shafi doesn't say it's an obligation to do that. He says it's an obligation. He, say, he doesn't say that your prayer will be broken. Oh. You understand? It's Ahmed bin Hanbal who says that if you do that, if you pray alone at the back, uh, alone behind the saf, your prayer is invalid. Him and bin Hazm. Bin Hazm as well. Did he say uh, uh, this? Yeah. Um, there is no space though. Hmm? There was no space. Here. There was no space. No. The, 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 the Malikis, the Malikis Shafi'is say that if you pray alone behind the Saf, it's fine. Shafi'i, the Hanafis and the Malikis, yeah. The Shafi'i say is wrong. Ahmed bin Hanbal say this prayer and bin Hazm is, is invalid, not only wrong. Because Shafi'i say if you pray alone, your prayer is still valid. That's the wrong stuff. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> but what they say, Shafi'i say you pull someone. Ahmed bin Hanbal, despite saying that it's invalid, he say it's uh, munkar that you pull someone. It's haram, like you are doing something wrong to pull someone. So he doesn't have a solution. Your prayer will be invited. You just finish. It's not, you wait or something. Mm. Or you try to squeeze inside. Or mm. The others say as well. The, say, the others say it's wrong. Yeah, if you can't go to the, the sit, stand next to the Imam, according to the method of the Hanafis, it will be okay. The right side of the Imam. Right side. Mm. And then if another person comes, then you can pull back together or another person will sit on the on the left well, the side. Hanafis say you pray with the right side. Of the Imam. Yeah. yeah the the Hanafis. Hanafis. The other mother, uh, Malik say no. Malik says you have to you can pray alone at the back. Abu Hanifa say you can pray alone at the back, there is nothing wrong with it. But if you stand up next to the Imam, there is still nothing wrong with it according to the Hanafis. The thing is we don't have hadith here Except to hadith which are which are narrated by Abu by Tirmidhi and Abu Dawud. First hadith is Wabi Sabinu Ma'bad. And it's narrated by Amr ibn Rashid or Ziyad ibn Abi Jad. Both the best you can say about them is unknown. Actually Ziyad ibn Abi Jad is weak. But uh, Amr ibn Rashid, yeah, unknown. So hadith is weak. The other hadith is the hadith of Ali ibn Shayban, narrated from his son, Abdul Rahman. And Abdul Rahman, ibn Ali ibn Shayban, ibn Hazm, didn't say he is thiqa. But he said, we don't know anything wrong with him. He it, it, it looks like he has heard already that people have criticized him in a way. So he say, uh, yeah. So the, probably the Malikis will, because at the time those Malikis that might have said something, because it's not in their madhab or the Hanafis, he will say this man is unknown, because the only actually according to the to usul of Hadith that the majority follow, he is definitely unknown. Why? Because nobody narrated from him except Abdullah ibn Badr. That is one man. They require two men to make a person known. To, a person to just be, be, be known 
in general, not to be uh, trustworthy or something, just to be to exist. Uh, we need two people. But of course, this rule is, is, is there is no proof for it. We just, uh, but still, even if you consider him to be known, because Abdullah bin Badr is thiqa, hmm, then we don't know his uh, how he is known physically. Yes, exists. But how is he in hadith? You understand? The fact that he is the son of Sahabi, if at all his father was Sahabi, that's what he claimed, it's not good enough. We have to know him. So, Abdul Hazm, this is what he said. He said, those who have spoken against him has not said anything except that he is nobody narrated from him except this man. Okay, that is... okay. And you are saying what? Do you know him? Do you know anyone who knows him? So, you understand? Of course, we we'll forget about Ibn Hibban. He knows everybody. <laughs> he knows everybody that he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, the hadith says that the Prophet saw someone praying behind the Saf when he finished the prayer. And then he said, uh, repeat your prayer. Because there is no prayer for someone who Praise behind the stuff. Generally, uh, I don't know how, like people like Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, like uh, Nawawi, uh, they will take this hadith. It is, it helps their madhab anyway, but how they can take it? When they made a rule, they say the Prophet never. Ask someone to repeat, to do something again, something that he has done wrong, yeah. until, unless the man knew it was wrong. Of course, it looks here, the man was, didn't know before. Yeah. So how does he ask him to repeat his prayer? It's our principle right, what they say. Well, we know from the hadith of Muawiyah ibn Akim, who prayed behind the Prophet and spoke. The Prophet told him to... The Prophet told him to uh, explain to him how to pray. He never told him to pray again. He spoke in the prayer. We know from the hadith of Abu Hurairah about the man who the Prophet told him, go and pray again, pray again. When he said, I don't know, he didn't tell him to repeat his prayer again. So this is how they say it. Like we know from the hadith of Abu Bakr, uh, and these hadith are Bukhari or Muslim. Uh, the hadith of Abu Bakr is in Bukhari where he said, uh, when he prayed within, before he reached the, the Saf, oh, yeah. he said, yeah, uh, don't do it again. So, so they say this is as, to take it as principle that you, the Prophet doesn't ask people to repeat something that they do, done out of ignorance. So they should have said this is contradict the, mm -hmm. what, what, uh, yeah, so this is, um, normally, I don't think that with these two hadith that we have here, someone should pull someone to the back with him. I mean, you just pray. We have hadith uh, of Anas ibn Malik that the Prophet came and uh, prayed in their house. He prayed with uh, the Prophet at his little brother so the Prophet put them behind him and there was a woman at the back now the hadith of Wabi Sabin Ma'abad actually doesn't say that uh, the Prophet told him to uh, to uh, criticize him for being alone you understand? he doesn't say he said that the Prophet saw someone Praying behind the Saf, and he asked him to repeat his prayer. That is the hadith of Wasbi Sabr Ba'bad. Why did he tell him to pray behind, to repeat his prayer? Did the Prophet say, repeat your prayer in that hadith of Abu Abu Sabr Ba'bad? That because you are praying alone behind is that, the Saf? Is that one sahih? Hmm? Is that one sahih? No, no, no. This hadith, these two hadith that I have been talking about. Yeah. The hadith of Ali ibn Shaiban is from Majhul and the hadith of Walbisa is from Majhul as well people.
Amr ibn Rashid and uh, Ziyad ibn Abi Ja'ad is weak. Okay? Majhul and Nun. Yeah. Now, the hadith of Majhul is not accepted. Yeah. The hadith of Ali ibn Shayban is from his son Abdul Rahman, who is uh, Majhul. Now, the hadith of Abdul Rahman ibn Shayban, Abdul Rahman ibn Ali ibn Shayban, says that the Prophet, when he saw the man praying behind the stuff, say, he told him, Repeat your prayer because there is no prayer for someone who prays behind the saf, alone behind the saf. So that is hadith is clear, except that this is not is weak, so you don't take it. The hadith of Wabisa, it doesn't say uh, the reason. He say the Prophet saw a man praying behind the saf. He told him to repeat his prayer. You see, yeah. Wabisa saw a man behind saf praying. And the Prophet told that man to repeat his prayer. Why did the, pra the Prophet, if the ha no, this hadith is not sahih, but if it was sahih, why did the Prophet say to the man who is praying alone behind the Saf to repeat his prayer? We don't know. You are just guessing that he told him that for being alone. Do you understand? So we, you, you can't take it. However, we have the hadith of Anas bin Malik where uh, he prayed behind the Prophet with another boy and behind them there was his mother praying with them alone with it was the Prophet who told them how to stand up mm -hmm. so the Prophet was leading the prayer Anas and his brother behind and the woman behind them now you tell me this is special for the woman I say that would have been Probably, if we had a hadith that shows other ways. Normally, everything that goes for woman goes for man. Yeah. So if you had hadith sahih that says that you shouldn't mm. pray, we will say, okay, this is for a woman. Yeah. But now you have nothing, and we have hadith that says that a woman prayed alone behind the self. And whatever woman do, the, way, uh, the, the prayer is just for man and woman. And the man and woman pray the same prayer. There is nothing to show to say that women have different prayer. Okay, so on that note, we'll uh, start. Okay, let me. What did we. Yeah, just. just okay. We did this. Hadith of Bishop Muhammad from his father, Ali a Muslim, uh, is not to be performed twice a day. If a person prays in congregation, does he have to repeat his another congregation? We have done this. Yeah. Condition of Imama yeah. and issue of precedence. Who is the person who has precedence of Imama? The person who recites the book of Allah the best is to read the people. And if two are equal on recitation, then one who has a greater knowledge of Sunnah. If they are equal of there is in the respect of the Sunnah and the one who immigrated first. If they are equal with respect to immigration, then the one who embraced Islam first. A man is not to lead another person who is under his authority, except with his permission. No, it doesn't say with under his authority. The hadith says a person Ya Ummul Qawma Akrahum Yukitawillah. The people should be led by the person who is most knowledgeable of Qur'an. Aqra' means sometimes uh, the Aqra' is the one who has memorized more. And then it says uh, as well, who has memorized more and he was first to memorize. That is فَإِنْ كَانُوا فِي الْقِرَاءَةِ سَوَاءَ If they are equal in qira'a, then the one who has more knowledge of sunnah. Then if they are equal in sunnah, then the first who immigrated first. Immigrated for a hijrah, he did hundred years. Immigrated from Darul Kufr to Darul Islam. Okay, but... 
Yeah, if if we are if it's not immigration for business, immigration in Islam is immigration for uh, religion. So if let's say people go from here to people go to Afghanistan, immigrate, or if they think that there is Islam there, or, or I mean, if you go to immigrate out of the country of Kufr to another place where there is Islam, then okay, the two people, if the two people have memorized Quran and they know Sunnah, both of them, you can't decide who knows more than the other. And what if somebody said, where is Islam today? Yes, yeah, so, okay. Well, Darul Islam is everywhere you go and live. Okay, immigrated from Darul Kufa to Darul Islam. To Darul Islam. So yeah. if I immigrate, for Darul Islam. So if I go to Pakistan. No, Darul Islam is not Darul Islam. Hmm? Yeah, but if if you go to look, America, no, America. if you go to Dar, Darul Islam, is not uh, the Arab Peninsula was divided hmm, into two. Uh, areas. One has legion to Persia and another one is to Roma. And the fact that Roma consider oh, this area is ours and Persia consider this area is ours and we don't know Mecca who probably was independent because nobody cared about small village huh? and Medina. For them it was like small village, no nothing else. Huh? But these uh, the fact that the Prophet was living there and establishing authority, anybody can make his claim. You can make claim. You can go to a village in Nuristan, in Af within Afghanistan, hmm? and live there and do everything, everything, and let America say this is our country. Says, I mean, let America say, the UN say, oh, this is part of our... They can't say, they can't say it. Everybody can say whatever he wants. Uh, you can go to uh, Yorkshire, to the mountains of Yorkshire, do that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, if you do, if if Brita Britain, if you ha if they have no, if they don't come to you, they don't harass you. Huh? Let them say this is Britain, this is our country, and we are. If you can go there and uh, live, it's fine. Because I can't tell you in London. Because London, there is. I do not say Yorkshire. Because this is the only place I know that it's uh, it's 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 very big. They say it's uh, there is very big place there. Yeah. Uh, people, the people can can be living there. The yes, actually, at one point, uh, the only place I know in Britain where it's it's very big, huh? there was place in there uh, that we a farm. At one point, we were we were going to buy it. Uh, just to keep uh, the brothers say the uh, we went and see, saw it very big place and very cheap I mean you can buy one uh, a, a very big place Farm, yeah. yeah like uh, more than uh, kilometers you understand Hectors, yeah. yeah hectares uh, and you buy it uh, hectare for five thousand pound oh, it's very cheap. yeah so so that is why I mentioned uh, uh, Yorkshire. <laughs> That's the only place I know. And it's empty, yeah? Yeah? Empty, empty. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, if you drive, you drive uh, for, for a long time, you don't see anything. Yeah, yeah of course. If you, if you go to live there, <laughs> they come and. Uh, of course, first, first they won't sell it to you, but if you by mistake buy it, Next time there is a police station. <laughs> okay, so the uh, uh, next time, inshallah, when I give an example like this, I will mention Ireland or, or Scotland. <laughs> Yalla. Okay, so yes, so he, the hadith says those who has immigrated, who became Muslim first. I mean, if they to decide, and then immigrated first. Okay. Now this hadith, yes. See the hadith in Bukhari. Mm. If, so this is my house. Yeah. Uh, more to lead prayer than. Yes, this is the hadith. It's not in Bukhari. This is the hadith. It's a Muslim. Ah, okay. This hadith, and then it says <coughs> at the end, ولا ي ولا الرجل الرجل في سلطانه. Okay. Yeah. In his kingdom. Okay. 
So a man shouldn't lead another person in his kingdom. Now, what is mean sultani? Kingdom. Sultan is place where you have authority. Oh. In his authority. Meaning, you don't, a person in his house, it's his authority. Oh. And uh, uh, Imam who looks after a mosque, it's his authority. Uh, oh, the Khalifa. The Khalifa, the Khalifa is everywhere is authority, except when in people's houses. Oh. I mean, the Khalifa, <laughs> as, long, as long as it's outside, Huh? It's his authority, but then when he comes to the house of the person, then it becomes the authority of the person in his house is greater than the authority of the Khalifa. But the Khalifa can order him to be something. Yeah, but he can't. No, not in his house. Can't he? The Khalifa can order a man to do things that Allah or allowed him to order. Yeah. Yeah. What is he going to order a man in his house? He can order. He can order a man generally. To okay, go and do uh, jihad. That is the order that Khalifa can do. But that order, he can make it outside. Mm -hmm. You understand? He doesn't have to come to the house. The man can tell him, go out and say it. You can't come to my house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, you understand? The authority of a man on his house is greater than. Traffic lights. Yeah, that is something uh, he, he can. Uh, is, that, is that an order? It's an order. It says don't jump the red lights. Yeah, no, it's not really. Don't jump the red lights. You, if you just say jump, don't jump the, light, the red lights, and a person chooses to do it, uh, something happens. That is his. But it's not an order like the order of the prophet. The prophet. If he says don't jump the red lights. Because yeah, I'm interested. Because Masri says mm. if the caliph says. Don't jump the red lights. Hmm. You're not allowed to jump the red no, lights. No, no. If, if the prophet says don't because, jump the red lights, where, you don't jump I'm it. Because thinking, well, where's he got the right to say? No, the, the, the if he says the if he makes something to not cause accidents, yeah, uh, yeah. that is uh, an advice that you have to take into consideration. Uh, he can say people have to walk on the right side yeah. so if you go you go on the right and you go you come on the left then uh, it has something from the religion however you don't do it exactly like the prophet <coughs> said if the prophet said it if the prophet said it when you come and the road is empty you still have to wait uh. but not when someone else has said it you understand yeah. so okay then we're going to go into another issue, don't worry. Yeah, I mean... Uh, because then somebody's going to say, well, how will society work then if you don't follow the laws? No, we... Know, we you know, small laws, by yeah, laws. Yeah. Like, don't throw rubbish, yeah. maybe, or... Yeah. Or, or, or for example, uh, imagine, imagine you're a plumber or something, and it says, the law says, don't use uh, these pipes or something. Yeah. Because of you use them, or, you use them, and anything happens. Huh? You don't use them, you shouldn't... You should try. Yeah. not to cause trouble, but you use them, you have done nothing haram, you take responsibility. You take responsibility, something happens, it's, Khalifa is, except where something is haram and halal, clearly, from Quran and Sunnah, is just a guide. But then, he's what if, if someone says the Khalifa, you have to obey the Khalifa, he must give us a limit. Yeah, there has to be a limit, yeah. yeah, so he must tell us the limit. If he can't know the limit, then we tell him the limit is what Allah has ordered. We obey him in the things that Allah ordered us to obey him. Like the Prophet said, If you are called for jihad, you have to go for jihad. Mm. By the Khalifa. Hmm? Yeah. But uh, if he doesn't, if he say, he say, okay, work for free. Give me half of your salary every time you work. Uh, okay, I am your Khalifa, come and wash my, my wife yeah. clothes. Oh? So this, uh, where is that? Yeah. They give him money, innit? Not really. They, they give him the khum, what we call khums. Oh. Hmm? But uh, giving the khums to the Khalifa, if he was a Khalifa, yeah. it's an obligation. Oh. Giving the, the, the zakat to the Khalifa is an obligation. The Khalifa is an order for the Khalifa to collect the zakat. 
and the Prophet said, and to add min al maghnami al khumus, to give the khumus from what you earn, not the what you earn walking, what you earn through ghanima. Hmm? The Prophet told Bani Abdul Qais that is you have to give khums five, the fifth of what you get when from war boot, uh, war booting. You understand? So <coughs> that is uh, that is one thing that Allah has allowed the Khalifa to yeah. to, to take. Yeah, we went to the Khalifa and I don't yeah. know why we are yeah. talking about the Khalifa. Let's go back to the Salah. Now the Hadith. Uh, the hadith of the Salah who has more right to lead the prayer is the hadith of Abu Mas'ud. This hadith that you wrote here is the hadith of Abu Mas'ud. Uh, Abu Mas'ud, Al Badri. No, he is called Badri, but the general opinion, I think, I think Bukhari thinks believes that he is from he is called Badri because he fought in Badr. Yeah, but he is called Badri because the majority say he is called Badri because he lived next to Badr. He was living in the area of Badr. So the Abu Mas'ud al Ansari is according this hadith uh, who is narrate which is narrated by Aws ibn Dhamaj. This hadith is narrated by Aws ibn Dhamaj. Aws ibn Dhamaj, nobody said he is thiqa except for Al Ijli. But Al Ijli, almost there is nobody that Al Ijli doesn't make thiqa. Uh, and Ibn Hibban, same thing. Shaba. Shaba ibn Hajjaj said he was a shaitan. Some people tried to interpret this to say, well, the person who narrated this from Shaba said, means that he is, has, his hadith is very nice. So he said shaitan to say that his hadith is very nice. That is not clear to me. Is it like when people say that he's bad? Yeah, like meaning he's good. Huh? Like oh, he's. This is slap. You understand? It is a possibility that uh, that what he meant, but it's not clear really. Uh, actually, many people when they report this from Shaba, they try to say criticize. I was not amazed by this, not to. And uh, Raja. No, Ismail bin Raja. Ismail bin Raja, the narrator of this hadith from Aws ibn Dhamaj, they say he praised him. Aws ibn Dhamaj was like this. He was born before Islam, but still never met the Prophet during his lifetime. So he narrated from Abu Mas'ud al-Badri and Aisha. And many people narrated from him, so he is known in a way known but not his adala whether he is trustworthy or not that is what is to, yeah, to be established now the fact that muslim has narrated from him some people will say muslim then have said thiqa muslim you can't say that about muslim yeah we you can use him for supporting hadith we used him as the main well this hadith you can't say is supporting hadith the first part might be supporting but then the last part uh, about hijra about uh, not to lead someone in his authority yeah. yeah so this hadith has to be looked more probably yeah. uh, because what we have here this is the information that i know about this person i mean this is nobody else i know that uh, Ibn Ma'in actually said, I don't know him. Ahmed bin Hanbal knew the hadith, but he never said anything about That mean he was not sure about him. Abu Hatim was not sure. Bukhari, this is the hadith that Bukhari will not miss. I mean, he will know this hadith, but he never narrated it in his book. Hmm? Uh, 
that is definitely Bukhari doesn't put every hadith in his book but to not to put this hadith like this in his book he left it intentionally I mean he doesn't he's not sure about it or probably he doesn't consider it to be strong enough to be in his book because of this man that also not a match so apart from this hadith we have hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri in Muslim as well that the Prophet said if there are three if there are three people then they should uh, one of them should lead them and the most rightful the most rightful person to the person who has more right to lead is the one uh, who has Aqra'uhum now Aqra'uhum people do interpret it in different way some people say the one who read better some say who the one who memorized more and the, uh, the, 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 the strongest opinion is that the one who has memorized more because uh, Aqra doesn't mean beautiful voice and uh, the other thing is it comes in the hadith that Aqra uh, about like the, the people who mem uh, to, to describe the people who memorized more like Ubayd ibn Ka'ab and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and others who memorized more than because if it comes to the beautiful voice Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was famous for reading better than the, the, like he has more beautiful voice than the other Sahaba there is another hadith Malik ibn Huwayr this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim that these people he said we came to the Prophet and we were young people and uh, we spent time with him and then he sent us back to our people to, to our villages he said it's true that the first one that he said that's in Bukhari yeah? no the first hadith about no, 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 Abu Sa'id al Khudri, that is Muslim only, Muslim. not and in Bukhari. This one, now? this one is in Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah, this hadith here, the Malik ibn Huwayrit, then he ordered them, he said, in the, when the prayer is due, then do Adhan, one should you lead you. Hmm? The one who should lead you is the oldest. You need to mention here the. Uh, hmm, you see, yeah, this adaptation. He said, "Now, Khalid al-Hadda, a sub-narrator of this hadith, <coughs> because this hadith Malik ibn Huwayrit is narrated by Abi Qilaba, and from him Khalid al-Hadda. So that is a sub-sub-narrator. He said they were equal in qira'a, and this is what Bukhari understood from the hadith. He even like when he put the title for it." He said, uh, if they are in Qira'a equal, then the one who should lead is the oldest. And he brought this hadith. And the way he understood that uh, they were equal, even though Khalid Hadda didn't say where he got it from. But he said, we were young men who came to the Prophet. He, he spent few days with him. Yeah? Now, they will say, in these few days, how are you going to know who memorized more than who? So he said, like they have stayed with the Prophet in the same amount of days, they would have memorized the same, you understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you are going to read the prayer, you are not going to say, okay, come here, tell me how many ayahs you have memorized. Huh? Yeah. And then you can start c counting the ayahs, and it just approximately. So, yeah, so this is the hadith that we have about Imam. The Ahnaf in the book of Hidayah, they go on and on and on, like they started like this. The one who memorized Quran most, who has to know Sunnah, the one who has done Hijrah, the one who became Muslim first, and then on and on and on, huh? the one who has, who is married, the one who has the most beautiful woman. <laughs> in the book of Hidayah, people said they are making jokes. I don't know how they... Oh, the, the, rest, the rest is... 
Okay, no, no proof. You don't know, just like this. Uh, and he will, he will say why he thinks that. Huh? You understand? And some people like uh, said uh, criticize them. Is are, are they like joking with the religion or whatever? Why? You see the ahlaf, why they no like no children in the front few rows? But this is you can't attribute it to the whole ahna like every hanafi. Yeah. This this part take it. Yeah, uh, you understand? Some of them. Uh, one the person who wrote the book, of course, and he took it from few of them, not everybody. Yeah, what did you say? Then my question was, um, yeah. how do you uh, have oh. let no children in the first few years? Don't let, let any children in the first few years. No, not, not the Ahnaf, that is the Ahnaf, that is the Malikis, they say the children, the children who are not Balik, yeah. Uh, they are not bad. They are. They are not obliged to pray. You understand? So they are not. They say like they are. They, they are like gaps. They are standing between. Uh, you understand? Because they are not supposed. Can they lead? The huh? Can a child lead? The no. Child leading the prayer. No. Child leading the prayer is an obligation. Yeah. But it's not an obligation for a child to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Can a non can somebody you can't, you can't, because something that is, that look, the obligation the prayer, mm. leading the prayer, is for the kifayah, no? For the kifayah. One of the people, we don't say, for the kifayah means uh, one person should do it. You understand? It's, it's, for the kifayah, what, yeah, what, what, what we mean by for the kifayah, it's for the ayn, yeah? But one person have done it, then the other are not able to do it. They can't do it. So we call it Fat Kifaya in this case. Uh, so meaning that not everybody is going to do it. So that this Fat, now everybody, who is, who is it an obligation on? It's obligation on the adults, not on the children. What, to lead a prayer? Yeah. It's hard to on the, yeah, it is an obligation on, yeah. on the adults. Where's the evidence for that? What? To lead the prayer yeah. is part. The Prophet said, "If you, if you are group, yeah. then one of you should lead the prayer. Should. One of you should lead the prayer. When you are a group. Yeah. To those young boys, is that the thing? No. Oh, generally. Jo young boys, yes. Young boys, not young, young children. No, no, yeah, yeah. But are you saying? That group of people. Yeah, that the group of people, the young men, teenagers probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they have the hukm of men. They are men. Mm. You understand? So the Prophet ordered them to pray as a jama'ah, and one of them should lead them. Now the order is for any order from the Prophet is not for boys, for children. It's for adults. Okay. So if it's for adults. The children are not, they have no obligation. Children don't have obligations. So it's not an obligation on them. How can you bring someone who is not obliged to do something, to do something on your behalf? Okay, someone's already done their sunnah, hmm. like uh, uh, this chap who used yeah, to pray with the prophet, yeah. and then he's going to lead doing his sunnah and people behind him are doing an obligation. Yes, he is still one of us. This is then uh, uh, this is something that I was thinking about a long time ago. Yeah. How to answer it? Okay. Yeah, because that's the next one. Yes. No, that is that is no problem yeah, about the niya about the niya being. Uh, yeah. You understand? However, the child is not obliged with this prayer to take. Uh, one of you should lead the prayer. One, a person should lead the prayer. The ikhtilaf of the niyyah is not a problem. The ikhtilaf of the niyyah is not a problem. But to bring someone who is not praying as an obligation. I told you before that the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal yeah. being uh, leading the prayer. Uh, 
with a different niyyah, we have no problem with that. However, leading the prayer of people who are praying behind someone who is doing an obligation shouldn't be a problem. But if he is leading, if he is leading, that probably is. Because it's not an obligation on him to okay. pray. And they are supposed to do an obli- that is an obligation. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, but like I said, someone's going to argue now. Yeah. Because that's what I was reading in the book. Mm. But there are a lot, some of the fuqaha are arguing that if someone's doing a sunnah and it's not an obligation for him, and they're doing an obligation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mu'a, mu'a. say a little kid, mm. it's not an obligation for him, but an obligation for them, so. They've done their... Mu'ad story, we are not sure. He definitely, when the prayer was with the Prophet, he definitely should have prayed with the Prophet, the obligation prayer. He can't delay it. When it is the obligation prayer is due and he is there, so he must pray the obligation prayer and then go and pray Sunnah. We are not sure that he has done that prayed behind the Prophet, the obligation prayer, and then he went and prayed Sunnah. This is how we understand it. We don't know if he understands it that way. He might have prayed Sunnah, and then he went and prayed the obligation prayer. There is a possibility. You can never answer this. We have spoken about this before, you remember? Mm. So, there is a possibility that he prayed with the Prophet, the obligation. Uh, He was uh, a knowledgeable person. But then, this is all guesses. Do, do you understand? And uh, the fact that he goes and leads the people in prayer, which is not an obligation on him anymore, it's not an obligation on them anymore. So, uh, on him, but it is on them. So he is just doing. It's like to tell someone who is pray on my behalf. You see, someone, it's an obligation on me, pray on my behalf. Or zakat, which is my, zakat is obligation on me, and someone will pay zakat on my behalf. Not to give me the money and Take it, uh, give me the money. And even the zakat is a bit different because zakat sometimes you don't even do have to do the, the intention. The khalifa can have the intention. He comes, come by my place, find the property, take what he want, and that's enough as long as I don't disagree. Even if, when he took it, I didn't have any intention. But let's say someone comes and say that does hajj on my behalf. When I am capable, huh? Hajj, my Hajj is an obligation, and someone does Hajj on my behalf. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, well, I don't know. something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, so that's it. Then you yeah. mean you finish this whole page? Go back to the Imam part. Mm. Don't read the prayer. Sorry. Just go back to the Imam part. Just hold that thought. Yeah. Mm. You've done it all because yeah. you did. Okay, okay. Can a minor lead? Can a person lead the prayer? Uh, so we've so done it. For the person being led. Okay. So that's Anything that. else? Well, there's, well, no, there's nothing because uh, this is another book. Mm. Okay. Yes, that's fine. What did you say? Uh, yeah, the the Iran part, what we the prayer. Mm. They all, uh, well, I think even the two of them, hmm? if one voluntarily doesn't want to lead, and even though he knows more Quran. If he doesn't want to lead. Yeah, and he knows more Quran. Yeah, but he doesn't want to. Yeah, okay. yeah the hadith, uh, if it was for the hadith of uh, Aus ibn Dhamaj, if it was the hadith of Aus ibn Dhamaj, then it will make it an obligation 
on him. Uh, the hadith of Awaz ibn Tam'at, it make it an obligation on him to lead if someone knows more Quran. You understand? The hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id Khudri, it just make it his right no. to lead the prayer. You he just say, so. He has more right yeah. to, to lead the prayer. But it's like, meaning, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to. You understand? So we think that one, that one's a problem. The hadith, yeah. if I was sure with it, if I was sure with it, because me, I I, I generally don't like to, to, to lead a prayer when there is someone who can lead. <laughs> and uh, then it will be another thing. I, yeah, because in our usul, anything that is haram in a prayer, if anything that is obligation that you miss, or anything that you should not do in prayer, but you still do it, or you do prayer in a different way that is said exactly. If you if you contradict any order, the prayer will be invalid altogether. It's not like ah, oh, you are doing something haram out, like the majority. The majority say sometimes is a condition, sometimes it's not. Mm. But the Zahiri say every obligation regarding prayer is a condition. What if you do a non haram? What if you forget an obligation? Right, you told us how to do the rukun, yeah? yeah? If you forget a rukun, make it up, yeah? yeah. If you, obligation, if you, you haven't done a condition... So. Yeah, so. so, yeah, okay, so. If you haven't done a condition, forget your prayer. It's not even your prayer valid. is invalid. Now, no, it's not you forget a condition. If you... Okay, so make your if, if you intentionally... Yeah, condition is out of prayer. Yeah, so... Outside the prayer. Yeah. You understand? So the condition is this, uh, but there is a difference between a condition and and obligation. Hmm? There is a difference between a condition and an obligation. An obligation in prayer, you can make it up, huh? but it does. It is like a condition. You understand? I mean, if you do it intentionally then your prayer is invalid. What if mm. you've done your prayer yeah. and you forgot to do an obligation and mm. you finish your prayer completely? Then what do you do? As long as if you have... I answered this question last time. No, you didn't. I did. You answered the Rukun one. Yeah, I thought... Because no, I, I, I said my wife asked yeah. what if you forget to do a Rukun? This is what you, you do. Go make up if, you, if you forget... Uh, an, obligation. an obligation in prayer and then you have to uh, and the sujood where the sujood has to be done before sujood saw sujood saw sometimes is before salam hmm. sometimes is Some, after so salam sometimes is after salam sometimes is before salam sometimes he say the prophet said he should do sujood before salam, sometimes, so just salam. It's up to him. Uh, no, it's not, but uh, there are places where you do before, there are places where you do after. Yeah. Uh, that is a bit complicated, so yeah, probably I mean, That's going to be one, it comes in the book as one section. So yeah, so I will do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's one section. So, this is how, uh, what you do. If you have forgotten the sujood sahu, and which is supposed to be before the salam, then, okay, you left and started doing whatever you are doing. You have to do it when you remember. And whatever happened in between is invalid. Let's say someone... Uh, yeah. The Prophet prayed to Raqqa. And then he did Salam. And that is only a guide for this... And then he has st he stood up, he spoke to people, people spoke to him, and then they told him, you missed prayer. So he continued to go uh, to Raqqa. Uh, the prayer, okay. Yeah. And then he did Sujud Sahu. So what he has spoken in between, he was in prayer, because the prayer has not finished. You understand? Yeah. But he spoke by mistake. He didn't know. Yeah. So that is, you understand? So the Surah is... Invited. The prayer is valid, but 
But oh, you speak Israel uh, if you speak intentionally, not by mistake. Okay. Yeah. The Prophet here spoke in the prayer, and the Sahaba spoke in the prayer. They prayed two rak'ah, and then prayed two rak'ah. In between, they were talking. Yeah, but the Prophet had the most knowledge of us, so he knew that he was in prayer. He didn't know that he was in prayer. He thought he thought he, thought he finished the prayer. Yeah, but after when he yeah. yeah yeah, and then he prayed two rak'ah. Three years go yeah. past, and you remember something. And then you do the sujood. If it has to be, if it has to be before the salam, yeah, if the sujood has to be, is before the salam in this place, then your prayer was invalid. Okay, so three years have gone past. So yeah. everything I've done for three years in between there is going to no, be. No, that prayer was invalid in three years. Because that prayer, if you have to do salam mm. before, mm -hmm. the, if you have to do sujood sahu, just you have to listen. So, if you have to do salam before uh, sujood sahu, before salam, yeah. then you have not finished your prayer. You did salam, yes, by yeah. mistake, the way the Prophet did salam for yeah. Turaka, yeah. but then you have not finished your prayer. And then, when you remember what you do, as long as you still have wudu, not in three years, what you do is you continue your prayer. You do sujood saw, which you missed, and then you do salam. Because the first salam was invalid. You did it before the sujood saw. Okay? Yeah. But if you have already lost wudu, then you have to pray again within the time. Yeah. If the time is finished, if the time is gone, then that prayer you can't pray it. Yeah. You didn't forget the prayer, you, you remembered the prayer. Yeah. So we can't say, oh, if you forget prayer, you, you pray when you remember. Mm. Because this prayer, actually, you didn't, never forgot it, you prayed it. Mm. But you prayed, prayed it wrong. Mm. And the time is gone, mm. you can't make it up. So it was a mistake, finish. Now, if this sujood saw is after prayer, after salam, then this sujood saw, according to some, you don't have to have wudu for it. Because the prayer is finished by salam. Okay, yeah. You understand? Yeah. So that sujood saw, you can do it anytime. In middle of the road. Yeah, whenever you remember, you just do the sujood saw. When someone gives salam when you're in the Jamaat, or does today someone walks in and yeah. says salam, yeah. do, you, do you go like that? You don't have to. There is hadith of Jabir, yeah. which is in Bukhari and Muslim, that he came to the Prophet and he said salam. And then he, the Prophet made, uh, moved gesture. his hand, yeah. gestured with his hand. There is the hadith of Bilal and Suhaib where the Prophet, when he made salam, they gestured with their hand. Yeah, that the hadith, yes. Yeah, this hadith here, the hadith of Bilal, it should, it can be looked at from the Isnad, the narration of Yazid bin Khusayfa, even though in the condition, uh, he is, um, there is the Isnad, there is man in the Isnad that should be looked at more, more closely. Hmm? However, the hadith of Jabir is in Bukhari, the hadith of and Muslim, the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud in Bukhari as well, the hadith about he came to the Prophet and he said salam, and the Prophet didn't answer until he finished the prayer. And uh, now, this hadith that the Prophet gestured with his hand, with the hadith of Bilal and Suhaib, people can say, this is proof that you can answer salam. Okay. That is, huh? Mutaba. What mutaba? Like, uh, okay, not taking it in consideration all the others or... I mean, look at, no, just taking the hadith of Jabir that he gestured with his hand. The hadith of Bilal and Suhaib clearly states that he answered the salam. 
You understand? Yeah. Gesturing with his hand doesn't mean that he answered the salam. Yeah. Maybe he said, talk. Yeah. don't talk to me. You understand? Yeah. I am praying. The way, yeah. the way he, uh, when the woman, when Um Salama, uh, it, was, it was his habit actually, to tell people like, away, oh, I am praying yeah. with his hand. Um Salama clearly, uh, the hadith about when he prayed after Asr, and this uh, Um Salama saw him praying after Asr, so she said, she sent her slave girl, she said, go stand up next to him, tell him, that you normally forbid us from praying after Asr. If he gesture with his hand, then leave. So Um Salama clearly know that he gestures, gestures with his hand when he is in prayer. Yes. Now, the only problem that shows that maybe he didn't say Salam when he gestured with his hand is when he finished and spoke to uh, Jabir he said, the only thing that stopped me from answering your salam was because I was praying. So if someone, if someone says that he gestured, he was answering the salam, okay, he said that I, I didn't answer your salam because I was praying. That means he didn't right. answer. Yeah. But what about someone else saying he meant... I didn't answer you by talking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was happy, finished, the problem is solved. <laughs>